What's going on? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bits for Everything Good and Bad Inside the World of Apple. And let's just get into it. This may not be the sexiest story to start off with, but it's the most important right now. We have our current coronavirus times. We're really required to wear face coverings whenever we go out. And a lot of you have sent messages saying that my iPhone's face ID won't detect me anymore since I'm wearing a face mask. And mine doesn't either, but Apple, they just released a new beta for iOS 13.5 to developers that makes it easier to skip face ID and enter in your passcode if you're wearing a face mask. Now, this new tweak will be able to detect if you're wearing a face mask. I have an iPhone XR here. I put the developer beta on it and face ID is still gonna work. It sees my face, I swipe up, boom, it's unlocked. Now this method only changes when it detects that you're wearing a mask. So this new change makes the process easier. I'm gonna put this mask on now, okay? I'm gonna relock my phone so you guys can see it. Okay, it's locked. Okay, I'm gonna turn here. Now you won't see the unlock thing, but right away I can swipe up and it now allows me to punch in my code. It's maybe a second and a half of difference from when you're getting rejected versus when you can just go directly to your passcode, but it makes a difference. So instead of waiting for Face ID to fail, you can then go right here. But I've got an idea for iOS 14. Let's bring on face mask. ID, like is there enough data to just see the upper half of our face for a face unlock? I don't know, I think you can. But also iOS 13.5 is the first version that includes the API for Apple and Google's COVID-19 contact tracing. It's not open for all developers, but only to public health authorities at the moment. But here's how it works. Two people will need to be within proximity of each other and then detected by Bluetooth. So the phones are gonna be able to exchange anonymous identifiers. Now in the future, if one of those people gets diagnosed with COVID-19, their device can transmit a list of everyone they've been in close contact with to the cloud. Now the other person will then get a list of people who have tested positive in their area. So if you match with someone who tested positive, then you'll be asked to contact health authorities. A big part of this moving forward to get us through this all is really being able to get testing for everyone, eventually get a vaccine, but also be able to quickly separate people who have been infected from those who haven't. It's something that the US has never been able to get ahead of compared to countries like South Korea. And again, this is an API they're still working on and improving it, but it's in iOS 13.5's beta and accessible to some health authorities right now. All right, let's get to iPhone 12 news from this week. I know you love the juicy rumors. Well, the Wall Street Journal claims Apple still plans to launch the iPhone 12 this year, but mass production of the new iPhones will be delayed because of coronavirus's effect on production worldwide. They also say that Apple is cutting back the number of phones that it plans to make in the second half of this year by 20%. We know that people don't have the same amount of money to spend right now with so many businesses shut down. September has historically always been iPhone month, so maybe that changes this year to October. But some rumors are already saying that the 2020 iPhone might not be available to order until October or even November. But you know, don't worry fanboys and fangirls, it's just a month. I think you'll be okay. All right, the Economic Daily News in China, they're also reviving the rumors that this year's iPhone with 5G will include an in-display fingerprint reader scanner. According to the report, touch panel maker GIS, OLED display maker BOE and Qualcomm, they're all collaborating together on the ultrasonic tech. No other rumors have said this is happening in 2020. Most have really pushed it out to 2021. Hey, maybe it happens, but with the economy slowing down again, there's just no real rush to get this out. Just like a lot of you were disappointed that there was no rumored mini LED 5G iPad Pro, which has reportedly been moved to 2021 as well. Now we know that the iPhone SE is out. I've talked a lot about it. My review is incoming. I just wanted to give it a little more time, but a company called Halide has one of the most popular camera apps called Halide Camera. Really clever name guys, but you should absolutely check it out because Halide recently published this in-depth look at the new iPhone SE's camera and its single lens system. We know that iFixit confirmed the actual iPhone SE camera hardware is interchangeable with the iPhone 8's camera, but it's the software that makes all the difference now. And Halide says, this is the first iPhone that can create a portrait effect out of a single 2D image. So the iPhone SE, it doesn't have the focus pixels that were in the iPhone XR because it's a three-year-old sensor. Instead, it's using machine learning to do this. And what's even cooler is that even though the new iPhone SE can only use portrait mode on human faces right now, Halide, they're taking that depth data that the iPhone SE gives to developers to bring the portrait effect to pets and objects in their own Halide camera app. So 
it's absolutely worth checking out for the new iPhone SE right now. And hopefully Apple does like a software update to bring that to their SE as well. All right, Samsung and Apple, they keep playing nice with each other in 2020. First, it was AirPlay 2 and the Apple TV app on Samsung television sets. Now, Apple Music is making its way onto Samsung TVs, supporting models as far back as 2018. This is the first time Apple Music has gone directly to any smart TV. And you know that it won't be the last TV platform they jump on. But could they eventually make the jump to new gaming consoles? We've got Microsoft's Xbox Series X, the Sony PS5 coming. It would be absolutely smart to do, but we're going to have to wait and see. And we know there's still a lot up in the air about the next AirPods, but the latest from Ming-Chi Kuo says the third gen AirPods, which will look like the current standard AirPods, are set to go into mass production in the first half of 2021. Now, Quo says it will not get any physical design change, but the difference will be internally using the systems in a package chip from the AirPods Pro inside the third gen AirPods. Now, Leaker John Prosser has also said these third gen AirPods are ready to launch anytime. We've also talked about ARM processors coming to the Mac a while back on here. Well, Bloomberg recently reported that Apple will release at least one Mac with its own custom-designed ARM-based chip in 2021. We've, we've got a lot of stuff here coming in 2021. Now, they say Apple is developing three Mac processors based on the A14 chip that will be in the new iPhones this year, and one of those chips will be significantly faster than the A-series chip used in the iPhone and iPad. Bloomberg also says the first Mac processors will have 12 cores, eight high-performance ones, four energy-efficient ones, but Apple's looking to push this even further with potential Macs with more than 12 cores in the future. And the company is already designing the second generation of Mac processors based on the A15 chips that we would likely see in late 2021. Now, Ming-Chi Kuo has also said the first ARM Mac will likely be a notebook, but there will be at least one Mac desktop with an ARM processor as well next year. And for me, this is getting exciting and my only concern is software compatibility. Really, what apps are they gonna be supporting right out of the gates? Because that's the biggest issue to me. You, you never get huge transitions like this that go smoothly. They just take time. All right, that's going to do it for now. If you like this video, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell ding, to get all my videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you got to check out my Apple Bits XL audio podcast where I go even deeper with these stories and more with special guests. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Be safe. See you.